Uh, my name is Jared Greiner. I'm on the Minecraft team here. I'm Jason Major, also on the Minecraft team. And we're here today to talk about add-ons, a new feature coming in uh, the 0 0.16 update, our next update. And we're going to focus on uh, how to make that villager guy, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so if you, if you missed the earlier part, the villager is actually built out of the skeleton. So let's actually kind of jump to some files we have on disk here. Okay. So I've got... Here's our... On this side here, we've got our alien invasion pack. And uh, so one of the things we talked about being able to change is all the textures on the guys. So I'm going to go into the textures folder and just kind of show you how this was made. And then real quick, where would you get the, all these alien files from? Oh, right. Um, so the alien files, we downloaded those off of the... Our, off their website for downloading our add-ons. Mm -hmm. Like it basically, if you if you import that level that we were playing before, you'll already have all these. Yes. Guys. Yeah. If you import the level, it'll be there. Um, it might. It'll probably come in a zip file. So at the right. worst, you have to open the zip file and extract yeah. it out if you want to modify it yourself. Cool. Um, but that's most OSs have that all built in there. It should be pretty easy for you to figure out. Sweet. Um, so if we go into textures, entity, skeleton. Right. Because this guy didn't really look like a skeleton. No, so he didn't look like what, a skeleton. What did you at all? change about him? So. Open with paint. Let's okay. zoom in because our textures are pretty small. Okay. So we've got all these parts here, so you can hopefully recognize the face of our fearless villager. <laughs> He's got his uh, old threes, man hair. Three strands of hair on top of his head. Um, stuff like that. And these these textures here, they're basically like a Christmas present that you've kind of taken all the sides of it and you've kind of peeled it apart, taken the top <laughs> of it, stuck it here, take the bottom of it and stick it here. Uh -huh. and, and that's kind of how this all works. So we've got his face here, we've got his legs here, we've got his body, got his arms, mm -hmm. and he's got his little cloak that sits over top of it, and his, ah, okay, his uh, nose is up here. So, and this is the villager in the state kind of before you recruited him to help you, right? Yeah, so this is the tame guy, and as you can tell, he's got his, right, his right, robe right. sitting okay. over top here. Um, we opened it in paint. I actually, some of these things I don't recommend using paint necessarily because uh, it doesn't handle transparency properly. Oh, sure. So sure. if you have transparency in there, I recommend something like Photoshop or paint.net. Um, it will work better for you. Nice. Um, but we also had the other version of them. So you're asking about that. Uh -huh. So let's open up the. So this is what he looks like after you give him a bow and kind of recruit yeah. him to, to help you out. Yeah, so it's actually you tame him, and we'll get into how he actually tamed him later. So he's, but it's basically the exact same thing. He's laid out exactly the same. Right, like this is really similar to the other one, but I can see the, the sunglasses yeah. and the kind of bow tie and the little differences there. Yep. So let's just minimize that in case we need it later. Okay. But then and how did you, he didn't, he still wasn't quite shaped like a skeleton, yeah. too. There were a yeah, couple skeletons other... are really scrawny arms. Right, and he had the like really that, big so. head like a villager and the nose and everything there, so how did you do that? Yeah. So we're going to jump back to the root folder of the, of the add-on and go into the models folder, and in here there's a mobs.json file. Okay. So we're going to edit this with my favorite text editor. <laughs> And this is JSON. So JSON's a very industry standard format. It's used to describe um, hierarchical data. Um, right. So, so yeah, this is like this is a bunch of text, but it's some. This is going to somehow define the shape of the creatures. Yeah. So so basically, the game is looking for geometry called geometry dot skeleton, and that's okay. how we know to associate that guy to how he gets built in the game. Mm -hmm. So he has an array of bones, and in the the bones are all the different parts of him that, that animate independently. So we have head, because it moves around. We've got uh -huh. arms and legs and body and, and stuff like that. So I think there's okay, six sense. pieces or something on there. Um, but the nose moves with the head. So we actually have, you can put more than one cube on one in, bone. In each, in each bone. Okay. So an example here, we wanted to look like the villagers. We got a cube here, which is the head. So he's eight pixels wide, which I was kind of, I should pull this back up. Sure. So he's eight pixels wide, which would be the front side of this guy's cube here. Okay. Ten high, which is this side here. Tall headed and guy. And eight deep, which is here. Okay. And then here's the top and, and stuff like that. So that's how that corresponds to. And then this is what's telling the thing, the UV is a pixel coordinate. And that's of the top left corner of where this unwrapped piece is in here. So in this case, it's zero, zero, because that's the top left. So it's zero, zeros up here, and it goes up to the width and up increments positively this way as well. Gotcha. So that, that makes me think of it almost like, uh, 
if you were to like take a, a ruler to a villager's head and like measure it out, then you'd get all these dimensions. Yeah. That so these are the, all the in pixels. Here. Is you can think of them as being in pixels. Mm -hmm. There's an extra parameter here called inflate, which actually <laughs> kind of takes the cube and just kind of think of it like you took a bike pump to his head and you <laughs> did like two pumps to it. And it just kind of pushes out a little bigger. Okay. Um, sometimes we do that to avoid some. It's a term called Z-fighting that you gotcha. see in the game, or some. there's a few other reasons why you okay. might want to do that. Um, cool. And then down here is his nose. So it's the same sort of thing, except it's a lot smaller. It's only right, two by right. four by two. Still a pretty big that, nose, though. <laughs> it's a big nose for compared to most people, but <laughs> a lot smaller than his giant head. Gotcha. And so if you wanted to change the way these guys look, you could just draw on this right here, and that would yeah. show up in the game. Yeah, so we could, we could draw on these things, change the pixels there. If you really wanted to go in and change and give him like a bigger head or something like that, mm -hmm. you generally have to edit both of these kind of in parallel with each other. So that makes if, sense. If you want to make his head taller, so if you want to give him 12 pixel high head, and make a really freakishly large forehead. <laughs> you could, you'd have to take this chunk here and move it down and add an ex extra two rows of pixels on sure. it. Sure. So back in here, so the, the real new stuff that's coming in 16, which is our again our first iteration on this stuff, is mm -hmm. we focused on entities for this release. So we're going to take the skeleton file and edit this with Notepad. So you got here, and what we see here is is actually kind of what we're going to try to build towards. Right. And it's. Uh, and we'll get into the details of what this all is later, but this is the one that actually acts like the add-on. But I right, want to this, reset it back. So this is the, but this is the behavior. Of this like is this. the behavior, yeah. So he's got all, he basically has all these different behaviors listed here. So you can see he's, he has a tameable behavior, and you can uh -huh. tame him with a bow and some stuff like that. But, a bunch of different stuff in there, right? Yeah, I'm gonna get into the details of that in a moment. Okay. But for now, I've also got a copy of the vanilla Files that ship there, and you can also you can download those from the same site that you would have got Alien Invasion from. And this is because trying to build these things from scratch is, is going to be a little intimidating. But sure. we, we ex expect most people to kind of take the existing stuff that we've shipped for vanilla behaviors, mm -hmm. and you can use those. So if you're interested in how um, a wolf gets tamed, you can open up Wolf, see exactly how it was built, and use that to put put it on something else. Right. This is exactly what we're going to end up doing. Yeah. Take the kind of bits and pieces that are in the the base game and yeah. and kind of tinker with those and match different parts and yeah. see what you come up with. So I'm going to copy the vanilla skeleton over top. So what we're going to get here is, because right. I haven't changed the model and I haven't changed the texture, he's going to look like the villager we had in the demo, but he's going to act like a skeleton. Makes sense, okay. So, so resetting now, the behavior back to a normal skeleton. Yeah. So let's go here. We're going to create a new world. Okay. This is our new uh, UI for world creation. So there's a few new things in here. The most important one right now is add-ons. So I just have to click on this. Alien Invasion is now one of the add-ons on the thing. Okay. So I want to make a creative world. Right. And you want to turn on cheats Choose that. too, right? Yeah. This is basically saying, hey, are you are you a cheater? I'm <laughs> like, yeah, I'm a cheater, but it's okay. All right. We don't um, need achievements right now. And I'm truly a cheater. I want to turn on. This turns on all the slash commands, which yeah. are also coming out in this release. Cool. And I don't want an infinite world. I just want a flat world, just so you can nice. truly see everything that's going on yeah, here. Yeah. Nice easy place to experiment. Um, that should be good. Yeah, Let's that pick sounds those great. Things. Let that world generate. Okay, and then what do you, you need to, uh, to be able to spawn a skeleton yeah. in then? Yeah, I always I always want to choose villager because he's he's so convincing. Right. So let's pick a skeleton here and drop in one of those. Drop guys. him. So he's actually burning up in the <laughs> sun right now. I'm still in creative, so he's not actually trying to attack me or anything. Right. So he's doing the regular skeleton behavior. But if I do show off some of those slash commands. He'll actually start shooting at me, but he's almost dead, so I should be able to take him out. <laughs> Punch yeah, him with a skeleton totally. egg. Nice. So that's kind of him acting as that. So we're going to go take him from that state of behaving just like a skeleton and kind of rebuild bit by bit him behaving like he did in the in the level yep. we were just playing. So we got the add-ons folder here, so let's open up the skeleton one. Mm-hmm. So we've got... This is the original skeleton one, so we've got a bunch. So let's get into some of the more details here. Yeah, tell, tell me a little bit, just how does, how does this work? Like, what are the parts yep. of, a, of a JSON file that, yep. that defines behaviors? Yep. So the root here is you have this Minecraft entity. That's just basically just telling the game that this is a entity or mob okay. in the game. Um, so what we've been doing is we've basically been taking all the behaviors in the game and kind of breaking them down into little pieces that we call components. Okay. So there's things like the collision box, which is basically how big is he in the world. So this helps us know if you shoot an arrow at it, when is it, it going to collide or not, or not or like that. How small of a tunnel um, can he fit into, all that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah. The identifier is, this is what actually, the game 
knows it wants to spawn a Minecraft skeleton. This mm -hmm. is what associates that with there. So it knows that this is the thing we want to actually create when, some, when you drop that, use that skeleton egg or respawns naturally in the world. Yeah, okay. Um, I see something about here, burns just, in daylight. Yeah, burns yeah. in daylight. We want to just get rid of that. We okay. don't need burns in daylight. Step one, you won't burn in daylight. You won't burn in daylight. Um, got stuff here for his health. Um, loot tables, so he's going to drop skeleton loot. Probably don't really need that. So we're using the loot table stuff that was added recently. I think it was in the 1.9 release of Java. They added loot tables. We're using oh, cool. the same loot tables now, so people can affect what type of stuff gets dropped nice. um, for these guys. So we've got the core skeleton here. So we got him not burning up. Let's make him. Want to make him a little friendlier. Mm -hmm. But to be honest, my memory is not perfect. So I'm going to open up a friendly mob and grab. Some behaviors from there. Okay. So Good let's place actually to start. grab the rabbit. Okay. Put it, I'm gonna put, splice like together a little bit of rabbit behavior and skeleton behavior here. So the rabbit has some stuff down here. So he has breedable, which we're not gonna mess with. Okay. He's things like that. We've got some other stuff here. He is What are you looking for in rabbit? I want him to panic. I want this guy to panic at their stuff. I want him to avoid other types of mobs. Okay. And I want him to be tempted. Take that stuff. We're gonna go back to our skeleton here. And just paste that in? Yeah, let's drop it right here. I like to organize it, because we have a, <laughs> a lot of the behaviors have a priority on them. Yeah. So I like to try to keep those grouped together. It just, it just helps. Helps you follow your own kind oh, of thought process more. We still have a flea sun here. We don't need that. <laughs> And then this avoid mob type, that's going to make him run away from some of the yeah. monsters in the game. Yeah, so what we can actually do here is I could actually just put uh, monster. Oh, cool. Just in general. Um, so that was that family stuff I was talking about earlier. So you can actually put just whatever terms you want in... Where was family? So family up here. Ah. So if anything, if anything has a family of monster in there, now this thing's going to actually try to avoid it. Gotcha. So let's actually get rid of some of these. Now what what family is want this to, guy? I don't want villagers to. to run away from each other, so right. let's just put villager on okay. there. This don't need any of that. looks like he's getting pretty close, though right now, because we copied from the rabbit, he's actually going to be tempted by carrots <laughs> and uh, flowers. Okay. So let's actually have him be too? tempted by the bow. Right, right, okay. And then I'll remove these ones. Simplify that a little bit. Save that. So this this should be pretty darn close. So we should actually try to get away from any monsters in the world. Let's test it out. Let's see. Let's see how that goes. So all you have to do then to test this out is just save it again and then reopen the world. Yep. Save that. And then because these are actually associated with the world, we have to load them every time you come into the world. So you can actually just kind of go back to the main menu, make your changes, and come back. Okay. And just reload your world. Well, let's see. Let's see what we did there. See what how how that works. So fingers crossed. <laughs> So it was a little bit of a, a little bit scary this to try out the stuff you put software. Okay, so spawn in another guy. So, okay, well he started off with a bow, which okay. I forgot to get rid of. So that was his uh, starting equipment. But he's not uh, burning up anymore. There. He's not burning up anymore. He's not shooting at you. He's not shooting at you want, me. Yeah, because you're in survival still. So if he if he was still had the the like hostile goals, he'd yeah, be shooting. Yeah, he at definitely you. would be trying to kill me right now. So we're definitely seeing some changes yeah, in his behavior. Good, good he's progress. getting a lot closer to what we want. So we got maybe it feels like we got like almost halfway there even with just those few first little changes. Yeah, mostly it's just kind of taking taking bits and pieces from other stuff, bringing them in, and changing some of the parameters. And you can pretty widely you can change a lot of stuff just with that. Yeah, nice. Um, so let's get back into our skeleton here. Mm -hmm. So, so where, where's that part about him starting with a bow? So the part with him starting with the bow is he has uh, starting equipment here. Right. So we basically, we use the same loot table stuff that we had before. Mm -hmm. So basically we'll run through the loot table logic and you can, so you can use the regular loot table stuff of sometimes it will drop something or not drop something and things like that. And we'll kind of just run through those. And if any of the things that are in there are actually equipable, we'll automatically equip it gotcha. on the person. So in this case, we just need to delete that chunk though. Yeah, we so don't we can just delete this because I don't want him to have a bow to start right. with. Right, okay. Now this should be pretty close to our normal peaceful villager who's not going to do anything. But that's a little boring. So let's actually give him a couple of things. So we've got this thing. So the component section here is a list of all the components that are on a guy when he default starts in the world. Yep. But we want some components to be able to add to there. So what we can do is we call them component groups. Okay. And I need a little comma here. JSON's very, loves its commas. Okay. So what I'm gonna have here is add in a, uh, I'm just gonna call it tamed. 
Okay, so it's a new group of behaviors that you'll So it's start. a new group. It's, it's a collection of a bunch of components. Okay, sure. That work together. So I'm going to do this. Now, because I know wolves can be tamed, right, I'm going right. to go find the wolf. So we've got a little bit of a skeleton in here, a little bit of a rabbit. Now we're going to get a little He's bit a of a wolf. skeleton, rabbit, and a wolf, yes. Okay. So let's edit. So here's the wolf. So I'm going to grab this tameable. Grab that little Copy section. Copy this. Put this into, into our, our skeleton. Skeleton. And that goes into the, the default components, right? Because you want him by default, he can be tamed. Yes. Okay. So let's put that, I'll just put it at the bottom here. Okay, so tameable bit there. What is, what, like that, what is all that going to do? That's going to let you, when you give him the bow, then he'll, uh, he'll become tamed. Yeah, so in this case, it's if I give him a bone. Oh, right. So we want to change that to bow. Nice. And right now he has a 33% chance of being tamed, is what the wolf has, but we don't want, we want him to always be tamed. So okay. we're going to set 100% chance. 100% chance. Great. So we change that. And then here we have what we refer to as a trigger. Mm -hmm. So we basically want something to happen when he's tamed, and it gives us the ability there. So we have this event of Minecraft on tame. But we don't actually have that event in here right now. So let's go back to the wolf and kind of see what they did. And this is going to get us back to that component group stuff. Yeah, so now we're back over in the wolf behavior. So let's find, yes, yeah, so we're back in the wolf. And there should on be. On tame. You just want to search for that too? Yeah. On that's tame. That's the, yes, this is it. OK. So I'm going to grab this, and then we'll talk about it in a second. Sure. So pull over that bit of, yes. of uh, JSON, the on tame add component group. Yeah, so now in our event section. Okay, so this is a whole new section of the yeah, behavior Yeah, so this file. is something we haven't gone into yet. So we have our on tame event, and it's got some, yeah, so when you get an on tame event, mm -hmm. which is what this trigger is going to fire, yep. I can add and remove component groups. Nice. So I don't, there's actually nothing I want to remove right now, so let's just delete this. Right, because like in the case of the wolf, he's kind of hostile to you at first, and then you tame yeah. him, and then he's not hostile yeah. anymore. So, you so, have to so in the wolf, that. we remove all those things. Right. And then in the villager, we we just need to add in the other stuff. Okay. So I can do... What did you call that call before? That group, tamed. The tamed group. Okay. Tamed. And then one of the things we had in... If I just leave it like this, it's not going to be obvious that he's tamed. Right, we he's not going to do anything We haven't actually new. changed anything when he's tamed. Right. So in this case, let's actually give him change his variant. And that's what's going to make him look different? Yes. Cool. I think it's one. <laughs> okay, well, we'll find out. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll find out. <laughs> we'll give it a test here. So... Will that be enough right there just to test the visual changes when you tame him? Um, it will. Let's actually also give the bow back to him. Ah, that makes sense, right? So then you, so, it feels like you've actually handed it to him. Yeah, I'm gonna open the old skeleton as well. Okay. Just so I can, because I want to remember what that was. Sure. So we've got his starting equipment. equipment. Right, 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 that little bit. So that bit was originally in the default component group, but we want to pull yeah. that over to the tamed yeah, component. Yeah, so now group. we only want to give him a bow once he's actually tamed. Okay. Rid of that comma. Okay. Now this should do something interesting. Let's test that part out. Got that all saved, so we're just going back into the world and see what our changes did. Do we need to get a new guy? Yeah, this guy already had a bow, so it saved out the fact that he had a bow. So if I drop a new guy, he doesn't have a bow now. Right. And if I have the bow, he's going to come over to me. Mm-hmm. You should just be able and to give right it to click, him. right-click, I gave it to him. Nice. And he's... Oh. He also got bigger. <laughs> I think I know what happened. It's because he thinks he's a wither skeleton. Oh, right, right. The wither so skeletons sure. are taller than the, the other wither guys. wither skeletons are a little bigger. That that works. We've got our bodyguards, well, they like work out a little bit. We can leave that later. <laughs> a little unexpected, but but it, it worked. Totally. So, so now he's, he's getting pretty close to what we want. Right. The only thing now is he's not actually going to attack any enemies. He's not going to shoot at anybody for us yet. Yeah. So he just looks cool, but he doesn't he act looks, cool. He looks cool. Well, let's make him act cool, too. So let's... Um, Actually, we already have the old skeleton open. That's a perfect place to grab this stuff from. Sweet. So I'm going to grab the shooter component okay. from him. Let's put that, that into the 
tamed version. Mm -hmm. See, if I were doing this, I would have named the tamed version the bodyguard version. But you get, you, you're, you're doing all this, you get to name things whatever you want. Yeah. I'm just being consistent. I with like the stuff to be stuff. Uh, predictable. All right. Because <laughs> I have to go debug this later. <laughs> Try to remember what the heck I called it. <laughs> um, so we got that. We also want to give him a ranged attack goal so he will actually attack things. Okay. And that will go here. Cool. So this is just going to attack whatever his current target is, but he doesn't have anything that actually chooses a target for him. Yeah, how does he know who to shoot? That's like kind of, I'm seeing all the pieces you're bringing over, yeah. but I don't so I've know. Yeah, so we've got two things here. we got hurt by target and nearest attackable target. So let's right. just grab both of those. And that's the last things we're going to have to pull over. So if he's hurt by target, is that going to make him, if I punch him, will he shoot? Will he start if you punch him, he would actually start shooting at okay. you. I might not put that on my bodyguards. Well, depends on the bodyguard you want. <laughs> So we got the, uh, yeah, so range attack, hurt by target, nearest attackable target. Problem we have right now is he's only will attack, um, his default nearest attackable is players who right. want him to attack monsters. Yeah, I don't want him to attack me. Come on. Monsters, that makes more sense. So we change it to monster, and again, that's that family type thing we talked about earlier. Right. So it's using the same thing. Must see max dist. Yeah, this all looks pretty good. All looks good? So we test that out then? That might almost be everything. That should be pretty darn close. Cool. So in this case, we'll probably need to spawn in a couple uh, other things for him to shoot at, right? So we can see yep. if that's all working. And do we need, again, just want to spawn a fresh one so we know for sure? Um, this guy should actually start doing his behavior. Okay, great. So let's... What do you want him to shoot at? Um, well, some we zombies, have the aliens, some aliens. So let's give him some of those zombies. That is... that egg. <laughs> so many different creatures you can spawn in here. Um, actually, yeah, let's... Where'd he go? He's running off into the sunset <laughs> over there. There's nobody for him to Get shoot. Back He's here. going searching for, for things to fight. All right. Come on, you. Get back here. Okay. So he's there he is. There he is. So he's, he's there. He's doing his behavior. Look he's at that. shooting at the guy, taking him out. And he won. Woo! Our big, beefy bodyguards can take out all the aliens now. Should we give him a golem? <laughs> oh, yeah, see if he can deal with that. One, one of those guys. He's not going to take him. Yeah, he won't be able to deal He's with that. He's not going <laughs> to. Right, okay, we get a, some iron and a pumpkin. Yeah, pumpkin. And here we go. We'd have to make, I think we're going to have to make our bodyguard a little bit stronger. Uh, Give yourself oh, something to stand on. Oh, there we go. I can do it. Uh oh. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, I didn't, didn't that didn't work there. out so well for him. Right. Well, thanks for showing me that, Jason. Yep. So hopefully you guys kind of learned, see, kind of see the beginning stages of what we're trying to deliver with the add-ons for the 16 release. Um, so we showed us we're focused on entities right now. The goal is to obviously try to apply the same level of thinking and customizability across the game. Um, mm -hmm. So kind of stay tuned for future updates.